Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? What a beautiful Sunday in Indiana it is. Where's my phone? Oh, let's see what time it is. I was like, oh, my phone's right over there. It is 5.20 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, and I am exhausted. I actually just grabbed this Evian spray from the counter to spray down my face. Oh. <laughs> and um, I have my coffee from brunch from Cafe Patashu, and I just made an iced uh, water, and then I have this cup of water that I've been drinking out here because I have been working on our walkway today, and I am exhausted. So let me tell you what happened. I woke up, I cannot figure out this pillow which way it wants to sit. You guys know what I mean by that? Like this pillow, I keep on turning around, and then this pillow doesn't like seem to wanna like sit in a certain way, <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. I woke up today to a text from my neighbor from across the street who's actually working in her garden right now, and she said that she had come over here this morning and she had pulled up some hostas that we could plant or that I could plant, and she was like, but you need to do this today. She's like, I know you guys go to brunch. She's like, but when you come back from brunch, like you need to do this today because they're not gonna make it past today. And I was like, okay. So, um, so she had pulled like three buckets of hostas and like with the bulbs and stuff like that. So we went to brunch. It is beautiful today. It's been like, I think it's like 80 degrees or something. Oh, yeah, oh, thank you. All cause of you. My neighbor said, Peter's gonna have a beautiful yard. Okay, let's see. What do you think the temperature is right now? It was about 81 a little while ago. Was it? She said it was about 81 a little while ago. Oh, you were, oh, it's 82. It is 82 degrees and full sunshine in Indianapolis and it is <clears throat> absolutely beautiful outside. And so, um, when we got back from brunch, Alex is like, he's not feeling great. I don't know what's going on. He hasn't felt great this whole weekend. And so he got home very, very early last night. I actually thought that he would be with his girlfriends a little while longer, but he said he wasn't feeling well. And so he came home early last night. Did we watch RuPaul's Drag Race last night? Yeah, he was only at like dinner like for like an hour. Well, he had eaten earlier, so he said he didn't really eat anything at dinner. And then he was like, I don't really feel that well anyway. So he came home and then we watched RuPaul's Drag Race last night and then he went to bed and he was like, I'm just, I'm not feeling it. I'm going to bed early. And I was like, okay. So he went to bed really, really early. Um, I can't remember what I watched. I watched something and then I laid down and took a little bit of a nap last night. What did, what did we watch after? What time did he get home? Maybe I laid down. Oh, I know what I did. I, I was like going through my head like, what did I do last night? So I finally finished, this is actually, I know this hat, it's probably looks, people are like, there's something different about that hat, but I can't figure out what it is. So this is actually the, the cotton version of this hat. It's not the corduroy version of this hat, but I'm trying to like break it in because I don't wear it very often. So I was wearing it out here today while I was gardening because I didn't want to like get dirt on my corduroy hat and stuff like that. So I'm trying to break this one in. I like this one just as much. Well, I like the corduroy one actually better, but I mean, it's the exact same hat. This one's just cotton instead of corduroy, but I'm trying to like break it in. So, um, I had, Alex last night had asked me before he went to dinner what that thing was that I bought for around my neck. He's like, what is this that you bought? And I was like, oh, that's a reading light for your neck. And he was like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I've been wanting to like use it and whatever. And like, I tried it one night and then I didn't really like use it or anything. So I sat out here last night, I made some coffee and I dark rest. No, I don't know what roast it was. <laughs> That's going to be like the, it's moose gate and then roast gate is going to be the, the moose gate was for the drama channel and roast gate is going to be for the vlog channel. That's going to be the scandal of the vlog channel for 2024 roast gate of which I know nothing about. I don't know anything about roasts of coffee, obviously after the two day, last two days, we're not going to discuss it today. I don't know what kind of coffee I had last night, but anyway, but I will tell you that of all the new coffees that I bought, this is kind of like the order that they go in, including like some of the new ones I bought that I bought before. So my favorite so far is the Cinnabon. That's my absolute favorite. And then next to that, well, I would say like tied for second is the Kauai, uh, Kauai banana, whatever it is, banana nut or whatever, banana cream, that and the IHOP 
buttery syrup. Those are like tied for second. Number one is the Cinnabon. That Cinnabon coffee is unbelievable. It is so good, so rich in taste. I don't know about the roast, but it's, I guess it's a light roast because somebody told me that. But it's rich in taste. I love it. So that's those are tied for second. And then the th third underneath there, I would say, is the coffee beanery, the banana nut. I like that one a lot. And... What else have I bought recently? This, the strawberry cream is good. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite, but it's good. It's interesting, like, it's an interesting flavor. I wouldn't want to drink it like all day, every day. Like, I could drink the IHOP. I could drink the, the Kauai banana one is a very unique taste and it leans kind of like to espresso taste, like it's very strong. Um, so I like, I'd savor that. Um, the IHOP one I could drink like all day, every day. Like it's fantastic. Um, and the cinnamon I could drink all day every day and it's not like super super strong like it doesn't taste like you're drinking cinnamon roll or anything like that um, The bones coffee the French toast I really liked until I got all the other coffees and then I was like It's just okay because people are like I wish you would try the other flavors of coffee It reminds me a lot of like Maud's coffee like Maud's coffee I really like and Maud's teas I really like but there will be like one flavor of Maud's coffee that I really, really like, and one flavor of Maud's tea that I really, really like. But other than that, like, so I don't know. So I'm gonna try some different Bones coffee because people said that they really, really like it, so I'm gonna try that. So I sat out here, and I finished the graphic novel that I was reading. I actually had a lot more of it than I thought I did because it took me about 45 minutes to finish it. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Juliet Milagro goes to... Portland or something like that. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. Um, <clears throat> I'll probably do a review of it over my Peter Likes Books channel because I need to do some reviews of like my Peter's Book Club books for the last couple months and I'll do that. I'll include that in there as well. I'm, I'll just like knock off like a couple reviews in like one video or something. And then I, I went into, I was like going in there to like start like reading like a Raymond Carvin short story or because I was like not ready to like lay down yet or watch TV. And so, and I was like not sure if I really wanted to take a nap, but I was kind of like getting a little tired, like I could take a nap. And so I started reading, I, I went in there and I was like gonna grab one of those short story books and I actually grabbed um, Talbot Street by Hutton, Hutton Hayes, which if you watch my Pure Likes book channel, it's a book that I have been wanting to read for like 20 years. I think it came out in like 2000, 2001. And actually this guy's written like three books. Um, I thought it was a pseudonym that his, it might be, I don't know, but if it is, he's written three books under the pseudonym and like articles and things like that. But I couldn't really find a whole lot about him. So he apparently went to the University of Alabama and then he went to Princeton for graduate school and then he lived like in London for a while and he had this friend, so it's a, it's a true story, and he had this friend that lived in Indianapolis. Okay, it really, so I'm only like a, a chapter in, I'm, I read the preface, and like a little bit further than that. It really reminds me of fellow travelers. The only thing about it is, it's kind of a little off-putting, is the language that he writes in, it's like somebody that, I don't know how really how to say this, it's like somebody that's trying to be a prolific writer, like he uses these like unbelievably run-on sentences and these words, it's, it's so wordy. But once you kind of get past that, like, the story is fantastic. I don't really know the full story yet. So it's about the, okay, it, the way it starts is this guy, the reason I wanted to read it was because it's about this bar in Indianapolis called Talbot Street, which is a true, it's a, that's a real bar that really existed. And the bar existed in the 70s and the 80s, and it was, like, the one of the biggest gay bars in the country. And then it closed down, and then after it was... Talbot Street, I believe it was the 21 Club, or the 21 Club and Talbot Street existed at the same time. Um, I was actually talking to my neighbor about this today because there's this Instagram account that I follow that's called like Queer Circle City Indie or something like that, and they put all these pictures up from like all the bars back in the day, like this bar club, I mean some of the bars I forget even existed, like this bar club cabaret. We used to go there all the time for drag shows, and like I, they had the whole cast on there, I was like, oh my god, I remember all of these. So anyway, it's crazy. So I was talking to her because she had told me that she used to go to those bars with her friends back in the day, her girlfriends. And so, um, and I was showing her like some of the pictures. She's like, oh my God, I remember these bars and all this kind of stuff. So it's a lot of pictures from like the 70s and the 80s. That's probably one of my favorite Instagram accounts. Well, you guys know I love the squirrel accounts and you guys know I love the dog rescue accounts. I don't really, there's only probably two or three 
Instagrammers, I wouldn't even call them influencers, but people that I followed back in the day that I still follow. Um, let me look, let me see if they can pull them up. Yeah, not really anybody. <clears throat> Drama channels. Oh, Dolly from, um, from what, Dragula. I love him so much. He and I have talked a little bit. He's really nice. Okay, so one, the only, like, there's two gay couples that I follow. And one is PJ and Thomas. And they're the guys that are in Tennessee. And they redo the houses. And they adopted the foster kids. I just love, like, following their life. Because they seem like such a nice couple. And then the other one, oh, Justin Anderson and Scoot. I follow them. And then the other one I follow is, I mean, I'm like, look, it's all dog rescues, you guys. Like, Big Marvis Teefs. Um, th little Thumbelina the Squirrel. Let's, let's see what she's up to right now. Oh, she's looking at a flower on the side of the river. <laughs> I love her so much. She makes me so happy. Oh, she's sleeping. I love little Thumbelina so much. Here she is walking around her house. Here she is with her dad. I love her mom's voice. I don't know what it is about her mom's voice, but if you guys watch the videos of Thumbelina and the Squirrel, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, her mom has a very unique voice. It's like, I th so they were from, I think, New York, and then they moved to Florida, and so she's got, like, a very, like, East Coast accent, but, like, but it's kind of, like, it's very sweet and kind of funny, too. Like, I would, I would just love to be her friend. Her voice just, Alex's cousin. Okay, let's see. Who's the other co couple? They're from, like, London, but they're not really from London. They're from, like, Brazil. Can't remember what his name is. But they've been together for a long time. They've been together for like 15 years. Petros and Telly or something like that. I follow them. That's like it as far as like um, Queens of Bravo, Squirrels of Instagram, <laughs> um, Cute Vintage Dreams. I mean, these are all pictures, like, uh, they're all just like little pictures of like little mouse, <laughs> dogs. I mean, I'm literally scrolling through here. Oh, husband and husband, I follow them because they do these comics. They've been really nice to me in the past, too. So, like, three gay couples, three or four gay couples, and then Missy the Squirrel. <laughs> I follow all these squirrel accounts. Oh, this is what I was going to say, the AIDS Memorial. So, the AIDS Memorial is probably one of my favorite Instagram accounts ever. So, I don't know if I've, if, if you miss me talking about this, I've talked about this a lot, but several years ago, it was after the accident, and it was, like, I wasn't really on social media a lot, and I was, like, rolling through social media one day. I think it was after the accident. And I was, like, rolling through social media one day, and I followed, like, all these, like, bearded guys that have these fantastic bodies. And, like, every YouTuber in the world, like, Tina Mojo, Shane Dawson, Trisha Payton. You know, all those people. All the, you know, well, Jeffree Star blocked me by then. But, you know, all those people. Um, you know, Toddy Westbrook, all those people. And, and then I followed, like, a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race girls, a lot of celebrities. And I just was, like... Okay, the only way I can equate it is that, and, and do you, like, my husband still follows, like, all those kinds of people, and he loves it, and whatever, but, like, whatever makes you happy, I think you should do what makes you happy. For me, it was very much, like, looking at, like, Martha Stewart Pinterest boards and feeling like my house looked like shit. I don't know if, like, to explain that, right? But it's, like, what my friend said to me several years ago that you always lose by compare, you always lose by comparison. It's, like, when I look at my house, which... Like, when I'm walking through my house at night, and the candles are lit, and the door's cracked open, you know, and the air's coming in, and I'm so cozy, and I love our house. Like, I love the bookshelves, and, you know, all, all the artwork, and all that kind of stuff. But, like, does it look like a Martha Stewart house in Delaware on the coast? No, not at all. I never will, you know? And so it kind of, like, brings me down a little bit. Well, I think there's a lot of people that put... First of all, I don't really, other than covering it on my drama channel, I don't care to follow the lives of influencers. I just, I'm really not that, to be honest with you, unless they're caught in scandal. Like, reality TV, I'm not that interested in it. I don't even follow that many reality TV people. I think I used to, the last one I followed was, like, Meredith Marks, and I think I stopped following that. I might follow, like, a RuPaul's Drag Race girl, or I think on Twitter I follow a couple, like, um, Real Housewives and stuff like that, but, like, I... Other than that, I, I stopped following most of those because I, I really don't have that much of an interest. I think I started following some of them when I started my reality TV channel, and then I was like, I just can't keep up with it, you know? But, um, and not to say that there's never a good-looking guy with a beard and a great body that shows up on my Instagram that I don't, like, look at it, you know? It's just, like, I have to realize that if I want to look like that, I have to work really hard to look like that, right? And the constant reminder that I don't look like that brings me down, and so... 
I started looking at things that made me happy, you know, and people rescuing animals and giving them longer lives or giving them forever homes when they're elderly. These elderly pets that have medical issues or, you know, artwork that takes me to some fantasy world or whatever, like of little animals living in the ground or whatever. Like, I love that. Like, that makes me happy. Um, and so I wanted to, like, intention was important to me. I think that's one thing that happened after the accident. Um, and I think this is where, like, it's hard because people are always like, well, well, not everybody, but there's a few people out there that are, like, always like, well, okay, well, what about your drama channel? The drama channel is, like, a, a completely different, it's a horse of a different color, okay? Let's just, let's just be for real. It's a gossip channel. I mean, I'm fully aware of that, right? So, um... I mean, and there have been times through the years that it has been hard for me to cover stuff on the drama channel, and I, you just can't be the same person across the board, right? So, like, that's a completely different situation. But, um, and I've just kind of, like, I've talked to my sponsor, actually, a lot about that, and she's just like, well, just look at that channel as, like, you know, you having fun and gossiping about celebrity BS with your girlfriends. Like, would you feel bad about that if you were doing that in your car? And I go... If I was gossiping with my girlfriends about what Jennifer Lopez or Madonna and they're like, yeah, and I'm like, no, I wouldn't feel bad about that at all. And they're like, why do you feel bad about it? I mean, these people are public figures, you know, and I've had to kind of like look at it that way a little bit. So I don't know what is going on with this pillow, these two pillows, actually. I wonder if I move that pillow from over here to over here. So anyway... But it was important for me to start doing... Not everything, but some things with intention in my life. And having, like, intention behind it. And I think it was around that time, maybe before then, but I started really looking at then the AIDS memorial on Instagram. And it's where people send in stories. There was just one from the Indianapolis the other day. I didn't know these people, um, but it was somebody writing about their spouse, their husband that had passed a couple years ago. And... Um, so people write in all the time about celebrities like Keith Haring, artists, um, you know, like Friends of Madonna, or it can be like, there's like fashion designers on there, or it can be just random people that somebody knew like in college or like a brother or sister, and they write in there and they show like, write some pictures and then they, um, and then they like write a story about like how they knew this person and how they affected them in their life. And then they're saying is something like, what is remembered is never forgotten or something. Hold on a second. Why is this not hitting? It won't go to it. What remember, what's remembered lives. What is remembered lives. And I love that. This is it. The AIDS Memorial. It's beautiful. It's, it's people remembering. I mean, like all these picture, pictures, like many of them are like from years and years ago. I mean, this, and it says in here, like when they passed away, like he passed away in 1992. And... It, it's just, it's all these people, like, writing in and remembering people. And, like, not a lot of them are famous, but some of them are. Um, I mean, most of them, I would say, are not famous. Somebody writing about their mother, you know? I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. And I love it. And I love the stories of it to keep the memory alive. And so, I have to say, since I stopped following all that stuff on Instagram... I enjoyed it when I followed it. I enjoyed it, you know, when I was, like, looking at who was doing what and all that kind of stuff. But I was also kind of consumed with it back in the day. Um, I know there's a lot of people that don't believe this, but honest to God, like, when I'm done doing my drama video, like, I'm done for the day. Like, I probably think more about <clears throat> what movie I'm going to pick for my Peter Dustev channel than I do about, like, what story I'm going to talk about on my drama channel. That's the truth, you know? Unless something huge goes off, then, like, I'm talking to people about it or whatever. But that very rarely happens anymore. And so, I don't even know how I got to that. Oh, I was showing her some stuff about that bar. I was telling you guys about that. But anyway, I don't know. Like, you know, it was interesting because I'm going to talk about this on my Peter Dustup channel or on Peter Dustup's channel, but I've been wanting to do this for a while. Do you guys remember that book that came out years ago? It was like this big and it says like 10,000 things that make you happy or whatever. So I wanted to start keeping a list. Remember I was going to do the happiness journal and the gratitude journal, which I still haven't started yet. Um, well, I've been wanting to do like this happiness thing where every day like I write things down that make me happy, you know, not just for that day, but just in general. And so like last night I was sitting there and I started keeping this just list, I called it happy list. 
And I put on here like strong smelling co coffee, windows open on spring nights, reading on the front porch, watching tr true crime shows late at night, watching shows late at night, naps with Alex and Boo, the feeling of the fan in my bed, fresh sheets, fresh flowers around the house, candles lit at night, clean kitchen, folded laundry, a new book, dancing. And I go on and on and on and made all these lists. And you know what was so interesting was like as I was making this list, I noticed that like my attitude improved greatly. Like I wasn't really in a bad mood anyway, but like as I was making this list, my attitude just like it, I, I just all of a sudden I was like filled with happiness because I was focusing on all these things that made me happy, you know? And I think that's the one thing that like I really don't understand a lot about like, I think it's important to have important discussions about things, but I mean, do it, do whatever you want to do. Like if you, if, if obsessing about things or talking about things that really bring you down, I'm not talking about important issues. Okay. I'm not talking about world issues, political issues. I think those things are important to be talked about. I think some social issues are important, obviously to talk about and things like that. Um, but to focus like on, what were Alex and I talking about? Because we were both saying the same thing about how much time we've spent in our life focusing on, I can't remember what it was, but anyway, I just don't understand, like, I, I, and I've done it in my life, like, I focused a lot of attention on negative, I don't want to do that anymore, I don't, and I fall to that, you know, I'm somebody that falls to that, to lean towards the negative and whatever, and, um, when to choose the happiness and to choose the bright and the positive is like, why would you not? I don't know, like that might be one of the biggest questions in my life, like why do I choose the negative over the positive sometimes, you know? Like, I don't know why I do that. I have, I think it's an easy answer to say as addicts or humans even, I, but I know a lot of people that don't do that. I think as addicts, we tend to See, the glass is half empty instead of half full. But even that being said, like, I have a lot of friends of mine that are sober that don't look at the, the world that way. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's something organic. I don't know if it's something, I mean, that from a very young age. But I knew it's something that I have to fight because I don't want to be that person. And I think for me, I don't understand it. I don't understand. <clears throat> I think... Having it be very, very real as a result of the accident, that I could not be here today and, and probably shouldn't be here because of how the accident was and that somebody died in the accident, that's a very real thing, right? I've sat out here, I've sat in the bed, I've sat in therapy sessions, I've sat, I mean, I have thought endlessly about this thing, right? And the one thing I know is that one moment that so profoundly affected the lives of so many people is reason enough not to focus on the negative or waste one more second, you know? And if people out there don't understand it, oh my God, I haven't seen this woman in forever. Hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in forever. I know. I was hoping he was doing okay because I hadn't seen you. Here. He's doing okay. Yeah. How about you? Doing good. Yeah. Good. Your sweater's so pretty. Oh, thank you. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah, Caroline always tells me to tell you hi if I see you. Yeah. My cousin Caroline that used to live next to, she always tells me to tell you hi if I see you. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. Tell her the same thing. I will. All right. It's good seeing you. Enjoy your walk. Enjoy this beautiful day. Um. I think like that one moment, which wasn't just one moment, like and it so profoundly affected so many people on such a huge deep level, right? Like when I look at that, I think to waste one breath on focusing on any kind of negativity out there, you know? And um, it was interesting because it's, it's a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste of life. It's a waste of breath. And honestly, like, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that as a reminder to myself because I fall into that very easily. I fall into 
being very negative, looking at the world in a negative way, you know, I say like, we're just, you know, I, I we're just gonna have like an honest conversation here. Like, it's like I say, I don't wanna talk about the haters anymore, right? Like, I don't wanna fo focus on that. And then like, three or four days go by and then like, I fall back into it. And I make some joke in my drama video. And people are like, there he is talking about the, the haters again. That's not like a one and done. Like, that's not like, you're gonna never talk about it again, right? Like, I'm doing my best to not focus my attention on it. But the reality is, like, I, I'm not, like, people send me stuff, I don't go there to look at it anymore. Things like that. Like, that's a huge step for me, right? Um, on and on and on. And there's a lot of huge steps that I've made that are private to me. What I don't understand, and this is not me trying to deter those people, because I'm never going to do that. Like, I'm never going to change those people and their, what they think they're doing and the purpose for why they're doing it. And they, they, they have their reasons, they have their purpose, and more, more, bless their heart, you know, more power to them. But why would you want to spend your time? Like, in all honesty, and I think the reason I don't understand it is this, right? Like, I make videos talking about things that I feel very serious about, right? I also realize that I'm not changing a lot of opinions about the people that I talk about in my drama video. Like, I'm not making dedicated channels to talking about one person. Like, if, if you told me you can, like, if you pick 10 people that I talk about and say you can never talk about that person again, I'd be like, okay, fine. Like, I won't talk about them again, right? Um, I mean, if you gave me good reason, why not to? Like, I'm not going to just talk about, not talk, talk about somebody because you're a fan of them or whatever, right? But, like, I'm just saying, like, just pick somebody out. It's not like... I'm so dedicated to that because I also know that if I'm not talking about him, somebody else will. And so the story will continue. I think there are important conversations to have. I think what I don't understand is like, it's not like I'm filming the video and then I'm taking to Twitter and then I'm creating fake accounts and then I'm looking into these people's personal information. I'm like, I'm consumed with it. Like, it, that makes no sense to me. It's weird if you want to know the truth, okay? It's so far past obsessive and stalking. It's really the life of a miserable person is really what it is. Because, And that's why I don't think I understand it. You know, somebody sent me this email. It was so nice. And they said, the reason you'll never understand where they're coming from and you're trying to rationalize with people that can't be rationalized with is because you don't look at the world the same way that, you know, they do. Talking about drama from a gossip point of view, and they, they always want to equate it to that, right? It's not the same thing as that. It's not obsessiveness. It's not trying to sway somebody's opinion. I say in my videos all the time, watch who you want to watch, feel the way that you want to feel, just have the information that you want to have, right? Um, I don't, I don't, it, it, so for me, hey, how are you? Hey, well, how are you? Good. Um, and, I, and I'm fully aware. I'm not going to sway anybody or change what they're going to do and, you know, and whatever. I think if... And maybe they have. I don't know. Maybe they have faced some life-altering moments in their life and they realize that their main goal and their main focus in life was to... I don't know, like, make everybody, educate everybody on Peter Mon or something like that. Maybe that's their goal in life, right? But, like, like I already know saying this isn't going to, like, change anybody's mind or get them to stop doing that. They'll probably put out two or three more videos today as a result of this, right? So be it. Like, I've, I've stopped. I, I realize I don't have any control or, or power over that. But what I don't understand is... I don't understand because it does come from a point of love for other people or that I disappointed them in some way or whatever. And the things that they put out there, are, it just, it's so bizarre to me that I'm like, why are you, and like, I have to be honest with you, I haven't really dealt with this in the last two weeks or whatever since I, since Florida, Florida was really healthy for me, but I think I'm just bringing this up because of like talking about the Instagram and whatever, right? Like... I, um, I just don't understand, um, you know, my friend Tony Jean says that as you get older, your life narrows, the road narrows. Well, I think as really major shit happens in your life, the road narrows too. And what becomes important and where you want to spend your time and space becomes 
pretty profound as well, and you no longer want to waste your time and space. I would not, like, well, I just don't understand it. I just don't get it, but, you know, maybe it's not mine to understand. Or maybe, like, the person that emailed me, it was such a nice email. Maybe I don't understand it because I don't, camera stopped. Maybe I don't understand it because I don't look at the world that way. You know, I just don't get it. Um, but it is what it is. I just hope that somebody, you know, I, I, in all honesty, like, I have friends of mine, and this is something I'm criticized for, right? Like, Peter doesn't greatly research his videos. I've never claimed to do that. <laughs> I've never claimed to greatly research my drama videos or whatever. In fact, I was thinking about this yesterday when I, had, like, read a couple different articles about JoJo Siwa, and I had, like, watched her music video, and I'd watched these clips, and I thought, damn, I've done more research on a video today for this than I did, you know, five years ago when I would watch a 30 second, 20 second, 15 second clip of Jeffree Star saying something and make a 20 minute video. But I've done 10 times more research watching all this stuff, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm like watching this stuff and I'm reading these articles and I'm like, I think it's important to talk about those things and that's what that channel is, you know? Like when people are like, well, you don't have to talk about those things. Well, I don't have to talk about those things, but that's what that channel is. Let's just call it for what it is, right? And, um, you know, and I'm sitting there, it's like, when I'm done filming the video, like, I turn it off and I vlog, or I turn it off and I go spend time with Alex and Boo, or I watch a TV show, or I read, or whatever. I hope somebody doesn't go out and have spent their last few moments looking at a vlog of mine from 2018 where they're trying to catch me in a lie. Because I can tell you right now, I ain't spending that kind of time on the people that I'm making videos about. Um, so, and if I was, I hope somebody would check me quickly and be like, you are spending way too much fucking time, you know? I was talking to a fellow channel of mine the other day and was talking about spending like 10 hours researching a video and blah, 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 whatever, and I was like, I hope it's something that you really care about that you're going to research 10 hours on. Because if I'm going to research 10 hours on something, you better bet your ass that I really give a shit about it. Okay? That I'm willing to go out on that. That I'm willing to let that be my life's mission. Okay? That if somebody comes to me and says, you are so obsessed with this person that you cannot shut up about it, that my response to that person isn't, yeah, go kiss their ass some more. That my, my response to that is, you better bet your fucking ass I'm obsessed with them. That's why I spend every waking moment talking about them, and I'm willing to go out on this mountain. That, that's the truth. I'm not wasting my time and energy on people that I don't care about, you know? And when I'm done filming a drama video, I'm uploading it, and I've gone on to the next thing. And like I said, I'm more concerned thinking about how am I going to fit in certain movies at what times, you know? Like, I, I added, well, let's see, I added how many more movies I added last night to my movie list as I was looking through Tubi. Where is it at? Um, well, I keep a list of dog names, and so I watched Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael last night, and her name's Dinky in the movie, and I thought that was actually a really cute name for a dog down the road. Dinky. Don't you think that's a cute name? Plus, she had all these, like, rescue dogs and a pig and all this kind of stuff that she keeps on this bed. I forgot about that movie. It was so cute. But where was it at? Friday Night Movies. Okay, I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies last night. I mean, I have so many movies now that I don't even know, like, in what order to put them in. I get more excited about that shit, and honest to God, I do, okay? Or, like, I open my refrigerator and I got all those sodas on there. I got some soda that I bought that's called, like, the world's grossest soda or something. I was going to do a review of it today until I started working on my yard. That's the kind of stuff I focus on. I know people don't believe that. Go look at my Twitter. I literally tweet the Christmas countdown when I can find it, when it comes up, and the Halloween countdown. That's it. I rarely ever tweet anything out, you know? I hardly ever put a picture on Instagram. Maybe put Instagram story every once in a while or reshare stuff that I see of squirrels and whatever. I don't understand that. I just think, like, at least be, stand behind it with your full chest, you know? And, like... <laughs> since you want to use that clip, you know, stand behind it with your full chest, and if you're going to dedicate your time and energy to making up multiple fake accounts and talk to yourself 
in multiple fake accounts. It's so obvious to anybody that's looking at it. And tweet each other, or tweet yourself back and forth on fake accounts, and spend your time um, looking up old videos of mine and saying things like, somebody commented on a video of mine the other day. I'm just gonna share this because I'm already having this conversation, so I'm gonna have it. Somebody commented on my weight loss video on my Peter Destev channel. Just so you know, I did block this person because I thought this was such a weird vibe. Somebody commented on my Peter Destev channel the other day and they said, Kayla left a comment on his vlog from two days ago about his weight. Now, Kayla's left several comments about my weight loss journey, and I've made it very clear that um, Kayla has been very encouraging to me, and I appreciate it, Kayla. You know I do, right? Like, I think Kayla knows that I appreciate her on my videos and things like that, right? This person commented and said, um... Kayla left a comment on, like, they responded to somebody that said, like, I feel weird even leaving this comment because it was a comment basically saying, like, maybe you don't really want it, you know? It was a fair comment. It was a fair comment. It was nothing that I would block or anything like that. It was like, I had said that somebody brought up a comment saying, well, you keep on ordering food, so maybe you don't really want it. You're not really doing the work to lose the weight, so maybe you don't want it. It was a fair comment. The way the first person said it was nasty. It was rude. Kayla hasn't ever said anything that's rude, first of all. I just want to make that clear, okay? So I don't know if, if people were coming at her or whatever, but this person, they said in the comment on not on my vlog, on my Peter Does Stuff channel, okay, so let's just, this is somebody that's watching me very, very closely, okay? Hey, how are you? And they said, Kayla left a comment on Peter's vlog two days ago saying something about his weight and he got, or she got slammed, or so many people said something back to her that she was forced to delete her comment. I think she deleted her comment or something like that. They, they questioned it. They were like, did you delete your comment, Kayla? I don't know if you did or not, blah, 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 whatever. I'm like, and then I went back and I looked at this person's other comments that they had left on my Peter Dessert channel. And it was like, every one of those was like, well, two years ago you said, and I was like, this is weird, okay, that you're watching me this closely. This is weird, all right? It's weird. So, I don't know what's going on with that, but that's that's strange to me. I don't keep tabs on anybody like that, okay? Like, true story, like, people think I do, but I don't, because I have a good memory. And so, when I'm sitting there and I'm watching Toddy Westbrook in a video say, well, this is what happened in my, uh, you know, whatever video, I'm like, okay, I haven't watched that video in two years, but, or whatever, last time I, reported on it, let me go back in and watch that video today. And I go back in and I watch that video today. It's not like I'm scouring through vlogs. It's not like, I don't even think I've watched in this, in 2024, I don't even think I've watched three Toddy Westbrook videos. I don't even know that I've watched one Jeffree Star video. I don't think I've ever even watched one Shane Dawson or Ryland Vlogs video through completion without skipping parts of it to report on it. I can tell you I haven't watched one Trisha Paytas podcast all the way through. I don't even know what she's doing these last two days, okay, or last two weeks, or last two months. I really don't know what she's doing. I actually saw a picture of her standing with somebody the other day, and I was like, oh, she's further along in her pregnancy than I thought she was, you know? So I have no clue what these people are doing with their life. So that is so weird to me that somebody was like keeping tabs, not just on me, but on the people that are commenting on my videos, right? So, I don't know. Kayla left a comment on my video last night. I responded to it because Kayla leaves a lot of comments on a lot of my videos. Kayla knows I love her and I appreciate her. You know, um, I think that's weird. I think go, like, why are you, like, how do you know that? Like, how do you know like, you are watching so closely everything that I do, and not only that, but the people that are leaving comments, and the weird thing about it was, I'd never seen this person's account before, which means they've probably been blocked on numerous other accounts. So, okay, people have numerous accounts, whatever. It's not even like I'm over it, or I can't deal with it anymore. It's not even that. It's just fucking bizarre. It's weird, okay? Like, you have literally no life, and you are so miserable that you are reading the comments, and you are keeping tabs on the people that are leaving comments on vlogs of mine that are two days old. Hey, I appreciate you watching my vlog. I really do, okay? I mean, that means a lot to me, but that's fucking weird, okay? Like, that's weird. You have problems. I'm just being honest, okay? Like, I've never gone to those lengths, period, end of story. I'm sure you'll probably find some vlog from six years ago where I went to those lengths. Did I? I don't know. Like, I don't feel like I've ever been like that. You know? When people are not in my life anymore, I do not follow them on social media because I don't want to know what they're doing. You know? And so, I'm watching, um, 
Welcome Home Roxy Carmichael last night, which is, so first I watch What Did Jennifer Do? Or What Jennifer Did, or whatever, which is the true crime documentary that just came out on Netflix. It's okay. It's interesting to me that it's number one of all the movies this week, because it's just okay. Like, I mean, it would be like an episode of 48 Hours. It's tragic, and it's sad, and it's horrible what happened, obviously. But it's not like I think it deserved... The story's just not that. I mean, they were like, oh, when we found out what happened, it was so crazy. And I'm like, it was? Like, I kind of saw that from the very beginning. But anyway, it was, it was, I, I'll watch anything true crime. So when I got done with that, I watched, um, so anyway, after I read, I did lay down for a little bit and took a nap. And then I got up and I watched that. And then I watched Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael, which was this, it, which is this week's pick for Peter's movie night. And I had forgotten about this movie because it came out in October of 1990. I thought it came out when I was in high school. Winona Ryder looks really young in it, actually. She's supposed to be like 15, but I think at the time she's like, she and I are about the same age, I think. So she's like 17, 18, 19 or something at the time. I don't know. But anyway. So it's about this girl that's real different and kind of like dances to the beat of her own drum. And, um... And she's been adopted, and she doesn't really get along that well with her adopted parents. And so this woman that ran, a, like, left town, who was with Jeff Daniels, and they had a baby, they show that at the very beginning, Winona Ryder thinks that it's her mom, and she's coming back to, to pick her up. It's Roxy Carmichael, and the whole town's going crazy. It's a small town, Clyde, Ohio, and everybody's going crazy because... Roxy Carmichael's coming home. And the way that this woman got famous, I forgot, I thought she was like in movies and stuff, was that this guy that she was with, that was like a famous rock star, wrote a song about her called In Roxy's Eyes. <laughs> and so he like gave her all of the royalties that he ever made on that song. So she's like super rich as a result of this song that somebody wrote about her. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. I'd forgotten it. But what I really forgot was the song, the theme song to this movie. They play at the beginning, they play at the end. Melissa Etheridge is through the whole thing. She actually does a cover of In Roxy's Eyes. Um, halfway through the movie, they play it. But at the beginning of... Boo Rowley's going crazy. Must be my neighbor dog outside. I hear Alex walking around, so I must be getting ready to take him out. Um... But at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie, they play this song called... Oh, is he coming out here? You coming out here to take Boo out? Okay, I'm back. Alex took Boo Radley outside in the front because the neighbor dog was out back. And sometimes Boo Radley, like, runs around and follows him all around the backyard and, like, is running and stuff like that. And then he, like, turns his neck and stuff like that. So we try to keep them a little bit separated. So anyway, um, I was watching Welcome Home Roxy Carmichael last night, and the theme song to it is this Melissa Etheridge song called Don't Look At Me. And the words are, um, if you don't like what you see, you don't have to look at me. If you don't like what I say, turn your head the other way. And I'm like listening to this, and I had like forgotten how much I loved this song back in the day. Now, you can't find it on iTunes or Spotify or anything like that. You have to actually watch the movie if you want to. It's a very, like, as soon as the movie starts. It's like, well, it starts with Roxy Carmichael leaving like 15 years ago. Well, 15 years ago from when the movie was made, which was 1990. Um, and so it, it starts then, and then, uh, but then it's like it shows her riding her bike. But if you look it up, I have it actually, I just had it pulled up over here. If you look up Melissa Etheridge, Don't Look At Me, it comes up. The song is like two minutes and 25 seconds. I love this song so much, and I was like listening to it, and I was like, I looked up the lyrics and everything, and I was like, oh my god, I forgot how much I love this song. I honest to god think that like, back in the day, because I can remember like listening to it somehow. Do you remember when we would do this, like, where you would take a tape recorder, and you would like play a TV in the background, and then you would tape a song? I used to do that to shows. Like, I can remember with the movie End of the Night, I love that movie so much, and it's such like, it ends in an airport, and so it always like, it's kind of a travel, like, adventure movie. Romancing the Stone, I would do this to it, too. I can remember like, with tape cassettes, I would like, have the TV playing, like the, the, you know, videotape, and then I would record, like, on tape cassette, the whole movie. I mean, you think about how far we've come that you can now, like, stream movies while you're, like, you know, or download movies while you're, like, on a plane or whatever. I would, like, have a tape cassette next... Did anybody else, please tell me somebody else did this, have a tape cassette next to TV so that, like, my favorite Christmas movie, Smoky Mountain Christmas, the songs, because 
just what was it two years ago the Smoky Mountain Christmas with Dolly Parton finally she put those songs out I mean since 1985 or 87 or whatever that show came out that movie came out you could never hear those songs so I would have to like play the song as a tape player and I would have this like warped version on a tape cassette that I would play you know but I think I did that with this song because the song like as soon as it started playing I was like oh my god I remember this song I love this movie so much I totally forgot I mean, now I understand why it had such a profound impact on me at the time. But in all honesty, like, there was a lot about the movie that I had forgotten. Like, she has this romance in the movie, and I don't want to tell you guys about it in case you're, like, wanting to watch the movies with me. It's on Tubi, so all the movies are free over there. I think you can find it on YouTube, too. There's a lot of different places to watch it. It's Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael. I did a whole video about it. In my, so every week on my Peter Dunn Stuff channel, I'm picking a movie that we're watching together. And um, I've got some really great movies picked. I'm really excited. And, and this was one of them, honestly. Like, it was funny. It was endearing. Um, I had forgotten really how good it was. My hostas that I planted earlier are, like, one of them is struggling. But the other, like, one, two, three, four, the two in the end have, like, perked up. And this one has two. And I'm like, oh, my God, what if I wake up and they're, like, huge? I would be so excited. You know that's not going to happen. I'm going to show them to you in just a second. So I watched Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael. And then I was going to watch an episode of The Walking Dead. And I was like, no, just go to bed. Why do I feel like I watched something else last night that was on my list, my weekly TV list? Or did I finish all of my weekly TV lists last night? Where's my, a weekly TV, RuPaul's Drag Race we watched last night, Vanderpump Rules, The Valley, finished that, Survivor, Amazing Race, Loot, already finished that, Vanderpump Villa, already finished that, American Horror Story Delicate, so I can, see now, this is what I do, so I don't know if you can see this, but I have a little check mark, so I can uncheck them now, we can go into a new week, if you don't like what you see, you don't have to look at me, and if you don't like what I say, you can turn the other way. I love that song. Oh my God, I had forgotten how much I loved it. And people were messaging me. It makes me made me so happy. Not a ton, a couple people. And they were like, oh my God, I'm watching Rocky, uh, Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael. And I'm so glad that you brought me or brought attention to this movie because I had never heard of it before. And a couple people were like, I forgot about this movie. Somebody put it on Instagram if they were watching it. I loved it. It made me so happy. So anyway, yeah. So I watched that. And then um, I went to bed. And... Um, I struggled a little bit falling asleep last night. Not as bad as I have been, but I struggled a little bit. I think it was just I was just so exhausted by the time that I finally went to bed. Who is to keep on texting me? I keep on getting all these text messages. Um, oh, I forgot that I have my water over here. Hold on, let me spray. <sighs> so actually, I was gonna do this video today while I... I always forget about these glasses. They're so pretty, aren't they? They're totally plastic from Amazon. Remember I used to drink these on my iced coffee all the time. I love them so much. But um, I was going to film my vlog while I was putting together my new table, which is in. So I got this new table. It's like a TV tray kind of thing. Do you see? That's what this is on where I put my iPad and stuff. So I bought a new one of these because unless you have it, like right where I have it right now, it's completely sturdy. But if I move it at all, it's like a little bumpy. So it kind of like goes up and down, whatever. This table right here, okay has a paper towel underneath it to keep it steady so I had to move that and oh what did I just do movie serve pause I don't know what that means did it stop no it didn't okay and then I moved everything off that table to clean the table the other day and I moved this off of there I don't know if I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with this I might put this on the back patio but anyway I bought this new table so this white table is the table that I've had for like I don't know five or six years I got it at Ikea because Caroline maybe I, maybe not that long I don't remember how long I've had it but anyway yeah I think it's been that long it's been ever since I think I got rid of the glider so when was that four or five years maybe I had the table before that I don't remember but anyway Caroline has this table but in a different color and she got it from Ikea so I went and got it from Ikea um so the table that I, I got from Amazon is like the same kind of width, but it's square and it's black and it looks like black wood, but it's actually black metal. And it has underneath there, it has like a shelf so I can put like books and stuff underneath there. So I got that and then I got another one of these, another one of these little, cause this one's like, it's kind of warped right here. I don't know if you can really see it either, but it's kind of warped right here. 
So I got a new one of these. What's interesting about this table is it was like this TV tray. My grandma used to use TV trays back in the day. Do you guys know what TV trays are? <laughs> They were like metal and they had like different designs on them. My grandma's had like flowers and ducks or something. Mallards. <laughs> Mallards. Why do I think that word is so funny? But anyway, um, do you know what I have to tell you? Oh, I know what I watched last, last night. I feel like I just did something to the camera. I don't know. But I watched earlier. I was like looking through Netflix. And I was like, what is something I've never seen before? Well, they were pushing the hell out of the Connors on Netflix. And the Connors was the reboot of Roseanne. And Roseanne was supposed to be on it, but it was when Roseanne was so problematic. Remember that? When she came out? Apparently she has some new talk show or something. I haven't watched it yet. But it was when, like, Roseanne came out and said some really horrific shit, right? And so Roseanne wasn't going to be on the show. But they kept the Connors up anyway. I didn't know it had five seasons to it. So I was like, well, I'm going to go in and watch the first season of the show, The Connors, and just kind of see what it's about. I, I think I had watched it. Like, Melissa and I watched it, like, years ago when it came out. But I didn't remember it at all. But watching it, I had totally forgotten that the first episode, they... So, Roseanne's dead when the Connor starts, and she's died of an opioid overdose. I had totally forgotten about that. I don't even think I finished the whole first episode. This is kind of like, it's totally different. The kids are all grown up. Has anybody watched it? Is it good? It's so funny because I loved Roseanne, the show, and then she kind of lost her mind, and... She said all this horrific shit, and I just was like, I couldn't stand by it anymore. And pe some people were like, it was a joke. She didn't really mean it that way. Other people were like this. I was like, I don't really know, but, like, she's a smart enough woman to know that a lot of these things that she's saying are really problematic to kind of come out and address it. And then they didn't have her on the show. Even Dan Goodman came out and was like, I love her, but I can't defend this, you know, something like that. And so I was like, I don't... I think I started watching The Connors way back when it first came out, which I guess would have been five or six years ago. And then I was just like, I'm kind of over it. I think Melissa and I both talked about it because Melissa and I both loved Roseanne, the Roseanne Halloweens and stuff back in the day. We were both like, yeah, it's just, it's really weird. Like, it doesn't, I don't know. So, does it, has anybody watched it? Is it any good? I don't even know what to think about it. So, anyway, um, so yeah, so, went to bed. The thing is, the last couple nights, I don't know what it is about my medicine, but like, I'm, somebody mentioned that some of the sleep medicine, so I'm on doxepin, which is in the same category, apparently, my doctor said is, is trazodone. It feels exactly like trazodone to me. Like, it does the same thing as trazodone, but it just works a little bit better. Like, it keeps me, like, I sleep deeper when I sleep, but it doesn't help me fall asleep at all. Like, I can take it and I could walk for two hours. Like, it wouldn't, like, it's not like a sleep, like, it makes me fall asleep. Um... But he thought it would work a little bit better than Trazodone because it has, like, different... He, he was just like, well, let's try this. So we tried it. I don't think it really works a whole lot better than Trazodone. The only thing is, is that, that I noticed differently about it, is that when I'm asleep, like, I sleep deep. But the other thing is, is that I wake up, like, several times during the night on it. Like, on Trazodone, I don't really... Maybe I did that? I don't remember that. On the Doxapen, I wake up, like... And I don't take it every single night I mean I take it most nights but I don't take it every single night like when we were in Florida I took it just like if I would stay up super super late or something like that I would take it but other than that I didn't usually take it because I was falling asleep right away um I, I wake up several times throughout the night but when I sleep I sleep deep and I also think it's part of what's giving me weird dreams but somebody commented and said that the left the restless leg thing um is uh, a part of a side effect of some of these medicines like trazodone. I had actually asked my doctor that, and he said it wasn't, but he may not know. I don't know. Um, I said, and he goes, well, I haven't really, I think he's, what he's, I, I don't think he didn't say it wasn't. I think what he said was he hadn't had anybody complain of that, is what he said to me. So I don't know. Um, I know there's not any great fix. It's like, I'm not going to go on anything like Ambien or anything. The battery stopped. I had to go inside and get another battery. Um, I didn't even know I was at the end of the battery, but I'm not going to vlog a whole lot longer anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, um, I, it's not like I can go on something like Ambien or Lunesta or something like that, so I'm not going to take one of those things. Um, it's always funny because, like, friends of mine that, like, are fully aware of me being sober, but they're 
not, they're like, well, you can take medications as a sober person that you need to take, like if you need to take Ambien. I'm like, yeah, but kind of the side effects of Ambien, even if like I wasn't worried about getting addicted to it, like that scares the shit out of me anyway. Like I've heard some scary stories about that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I don't know. Um, I've always had weird sleep issues ever since I was a kid, you know? And when I was in high school, I pushed myself and stayed up super late. It was interesting, like, when I was making my happy list last night, I was like, it's so funny how many of these things occur at night. Like, watching TV shows at night, reading books at night, lighting candles at night, laying in bed at night with your fan. It's like everything, like, I'm such a night person. Um, and I, I just, I always have been. Like, I always have been a night person, you know? Um, and so, I don't really remember, like, I... I don't really remember when I started like really struggling falling asleep, but the other thing is I can remember when I got sober talking to my doctor because I think I was having problems falling asleep in treatment and my doctor said to me something about like you've messed up your clock at this point from using because you've used for you know the last 10 years or whatever you're gonna always have problems falling asleep probably like as a person in recovery like your clock is screwed up at this point because you've been using weed to fall asleep you've been passing out in you know from alcohol like you've been eating pills and falling asleep like your body is so used to having that kind of stuff that you're probably gonna always have a hard time falling asleep he said i know at that time he said i know people that have been sober for 20 years and they're still having a hard time falling asleep that are in recovery he goes so that could just be your story i do remember him saying that to me so, I mean, it could be a thing that I struggle with for the rest of my life. I don't know. I've always struggled with it. You know, Alex lays his head on the pillow, plugs in his phone, and he's out in two seconds. My ex was the same way. I feel like every person I've ever known has been like that, you know? Um, I, Tanya struggles a lot, too, you know? And Tanya's a nap taker. And she's like, I sleep when I'm tired. And that, then she'll, you know, be up reading, you know, late at night or whatever. Um... But Tanya is somebody that can take like two or three naps in a day. Like, and, I, and she'll take like a nap for like a half an hour or an hour, or sometimes like, you know, longer than that or whatever. Um, she's always been like that ever since I knew her, you know? Um, but she's the only person that I know that like I'll talk to consistently that I'll say like, yeah, I'm having a hard time falling asleep. Like she and I are very similar with stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's any fix to it. I don't think like, you know, even when I was walking more at night, like, yeah, it helped me sleep a little bit because I was so relaxed to be in bed and it like put me in like an altered state of mind. Um, but I did not, it didn't, I wouldn't say like I fall asleep like Alex does. I mean, it was still a good hour that I laid there. I mean, it's a long time to lay in bed and not fall asleep is an hour to three hours. Like that's a long time. If you struggle with it, you totally know what I'm talking about. If you're if you are somebody that has never struggled with it, like Alex, like he doesn't get it. He's like, I fall asleep like right away. So what are you talking about? How is this battery at the halfway mark already? I'm like, did I not charge? The battery was sitting out there. I'm like, did I not charge this battery? Where am I at on time? How long have I been vlogging for? So I don't know, but I had a hard time falling asleep last night. So anyway, but I do got, I want to show you guys what I did before I turn off this camera and get done vlogging because um, I'm very, very proud of it. So let me spray my water. So yeah, wasn't that so nice of my neighbor? Like I woke up and she said, should we read, should we read the text? Hold on, let's see what she said. She said, we've been texting each other all day long. See, I was texting her about these like the Instagram, the bars and stuff like that so she could have them. She said, hey, Peter, she's like, I just dug up five clumps of hostas and they are sitting in pots in your yard closest to your neighbors. The purple pot has several little plants and should be put in one hole. Let me know when you're ready to dig your holes for them and I will come over with some fertilizer and a shovel if you need one. They should be planted today. And I said, oh my God, thank you so much. And so when I got home, I think she was taking a nap. So I started like getting rid of all the weeds. I didn't, I didn't get rid of all the weeds, but it looks pretty good. I showed you guys the other day what it looks like. So this is what it looks like right now. Now the hostas are not big yet, okay? They're little baby hostas. Okay, so you can see I've weeded a lot of this. And this is going to all be black mulch, like really, really dark black mulch. Okay, so I spent the better part of the afternoon like weeding all of this first. And then she came over here and we planted the hostas. So the way that I want it is I want five hostas all the way down here. Now this is kind of like two hostas. 
But she said she thinks this is going to move and be like one big hosta. So I might, she said I could move this one and move it in the back. So what I want is one, two, three, four, five. I want five hostas all the way down. Okay. So this is what it looks like. This is a newly planted hosta. You can see it's been watered. Just watered it. This is a hosta that's been around for a while. Look at how much of all that grass I got up. I mean, some of it's still there, but I got most of it up. And then this is a new baby hosta. Well, it's not new, but we, we planted it. And then this is a new baby hosta. The grass over here. Oh my God, this stuff. Like I picked up all these rocks, got all the around. I mean, it was so hard to get this stuff around here. And then over here, we didn't want to, you can see the cord. If you can see it, but they put the cord in there for the electric company. It was there before, but I think they moved it and still under. So this is the new little baby hosta in the front yard. This is, you can see. It's gonna look so nice. And this is the other new baby hosta. And then look at how much these are growing. Can you how much, believe how much of this I got weeded? Look at that. Alex is kind of blown away. My neighbor's leaving. Just wave to him. Yeah, so got all this up. It's beautiful. So I'm hoping that these down here, these little baby hostas, will end up being like this. Now this will be like a huge clump. But see, she's kind of like, she's kind of wilting in the wind a little bit. I should name them, shouldn't I? And then do you see these? These are like standing straight up. We're supposed to get some rain on Tuesday and this one's kind of well said she's not doing so good. But she said she said she's like, she'll be fine, don't worry about it. So, and then I'm gonna have a new table right here. And then I think I might take that white table and put it over in that corner. And then I might put like plants on that. And then I might, well, Fernalicious will be right there. And then flowers up there. I'm so excited. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be a beautiful summer. Here, should I take a picture with my new hostas? That'll be my vlog. Such excitement, isn't it? It seems so funny to me that, what is it today? April the 14th? I can't believe it's April the 4th. Is it the 14th? Well, first of all, I can't believe that I have <laughs> vlogged for 14 days in a row over here. Woo! I'm so proud of myself. Um, but I can't believe it is April 14th and I've already got the front walk done. I mean, I still got a lot of this grass to pick up and stuff like that. But once she got the, got the mulch down, she was like, if you, and we're talking about like weed eater and getting the weed eater on the grass and stuff like that. And she was like, the fact is that you got it up before it starts flowering. If you get it up before it starts flowering, and the seeds won't come back. So, um, and her yard next door to me is not bad. Like her walkway, not walkway, but her front of her house, which is like what, so where I have this, she has like the front of her house. It's not bad, so it's not gonna flow over here. Um, so yeah. So once a week, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna weed this. I am gonna wait, well, I'll probably wait till like the first weekend in May. And then have Alex take me up the street and get some mulch, 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 mulch. Um, just because I don't want to do it. Well, today it's too late. They're probably closed. But I don't want to, uh, I want to wait till the hostas grow a little bit, see what they do. Because I might take some of the, this clump over here, if these don't do well in front, and I might move them down there. To the front because I want the front to have like big bush bushels of hostas which is so funny because my neighbors across the street they put hostas in last year they had like landscapers come and put hostas in my mom actually put these in when I think it was my mom wasn't it her because there was a huge bush here and she ended up oh no I pulled the huge bush I think my mom was the one she had bushes along here and then she, yes and then she had a, and she had hostas put in well they had hostas put in across the street their hostas are like little they're like real little like that they haven't really grown a whole lot it's so funny because like when the hostas are in full bloom, I mean these have literally, right here, these hostas, I mean they were just like, I mean I showed you guys like, did you see how big they are, all of these hostas? Like a week ago, I mean they weren't even like hardly coming up yet. 
People always say to me, like when they walk down the street, they're always like, your hostas are so beautiful. And I'm like, thank you so much. I never thought that that would be like a compliment that I would care about. Your hostas are so beautiful. I honest to God never thought that that would be something that I would care about. All right, well listen, I'm gonna get off here now and I'm going, I'm going to start uploading this vlog. This is the only video that I made today, is my vlog. So I'm gonna start rendering this vlog and get it uploaded. And then I am going to take a walk and then take a shower and put on some comfy pajamas and read out here and watch a TV show. I need a little bit more of this. This is literally just spring rock water. Um, it's not my favorite facial spray in the world, but I keep them around because I have bought so many of them. So anyway, cheers to Sunday. Hope that you are getting refreshed, renewed, rejuvenated, and relaxed for the week ahead. And um, hope you're having the most magically amazing um, Sunday. What do I usually say? I hope you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And uh, remember these three very important things. One, you can stretch your day over whenever you want, or your week if you need to, but tomorrow the week starting. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Um, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face. <laughs> I couldn't remember it for a second. You might be changing their day for the better. You might be making them happier. You might be giving them some, ah, uh, uh, cannot speak. You might be giving them some hope. Also, be kinder to one another. Love one another a little bit more. Most importantly, be kinder to yourself and love yourself a little bit more. I'm talked out. Be kinder to yourself and love yourself a little bit more. Because if you're kinder to yourself, then you'll be kinder to others. And if you love yourself more, I'm stumbling over my words. If you love yourself more, then you will love others more. If you love yourself more, then you will love others more as well. And like my neighbor, be a good neighbor. She just totally made my day today. And now I have this beautiful walk. And I have new hostas that I'm excited to see if they'll grow this summer. And I am very, very excited about it. It's going to be a good springer. A springer. <laughs> it's going to be a good springer. Jerry Springer. It's going to be a good spring. It's going to be a good summer. I love you guys so much. Here's to a fantastic week. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.